Hey everybody, welcome back to HPC Tech Shorts, where every week we take you to the HPC water cooler here in AWS Engineering. So this week we're joined by Jothi Vankatesh in Austin, Texas. Hey Jothi. Hi Booth. Uh, so Jothi is one of our um, senior solution architects in, in the HPC specialist uh, group. Um, Jothi works with loads of customers doing lots of different HPC workloads, but she's also uh, done quite a bit of work with DCV, uh, the nice DCV product that we use for you know remote desktop, remote visualization. But the question that we've been getting asked quite a lot lately is what's the what's the impact of all those of all those pixels on the network? traffic, and in particular because AWS has a data charge for network traffic, how does that impact How does that impact my bill if I'm using DCV? Should I be worried about this? Is it a consideration? So uh, with that in mind, Jothi and I talked a couple of weeks ago, and she came up with the idea of testing this out in a bunch of different scenarios. I think we probably should start at the beginning, which is, you know, what are the things that actually affect that? you know, all up bit right. Sure, yeah. So I'm gonna start by listing some of the factors that uh, that can impact the bit rate, right? Uh, so let's pick the first one here. It's, uh, so it's network latency. So when we are talking about network latency, um, I like to recommend that you have your DCV client and the server as geographically close as possible, yeah. right? And of course, uh, th there are protocols, the data transport protocols to choose from, which can also help you, uh, you know, mask some of the effects of uh, higher latency if there are. So the protocol choice uh, that, you know, with DCV, uh, there is, um, it supports uh, the WebSocket or TCP, and it also supports QUIC. Uh, the next one here we have is the frame rate, right? So if you have a higher frame rate, it is it, it is uh, going to also impact your bit rates. And then we have uh, the aspect ratio, the display resolution. So we have to remember here that uh, DCV has this uh, uh, nice feature where it can automatically resize based on the uh, the client screen resolution. So when once you resize your uh, you know the the screen on your client, the server resolution automatically updates itself. So here uh, we also ran some tests on uh, you know maybe standard def, uh, high def, and also 4K. So you can also uh, see some of those uh, you know how how display resolution can impact bit rates as well. And and then it also depends on how dynamic the content on your screen is, right? Uh, so uh, another thing to remember here is DCV is, doesn't transport every single pixel on the screen, but it transports only the changing pixels. Thereby, you're also conserving on the bandwidth by doing so. But uh, if you have a lot of dynamic content on your screen, then yes, you you are uh, consuming more bandwidth, and then it 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 can impact the bit rate. So it depends. It depends on uh, what kind of content you have running on your screen. And that's really H.264 doing all of that work, right, in terms of yes. the bandwidth preservation when not much is moving. Yes, yes, totally. So uh, for everything on the screen that is not moving, uh, DCV uses H.264 video compression, so it conserves on the bandwidth, and whatever is static, it is using lossless. So it also has the cap capability to adapt based on the network conditions and suitably use the, the right compression strategy. So the, the scoop on the story today is that you have to do some pretty extreme streaming uh, with DCV in order to really bump your bill up. So so we'll, we'll show you what we mean by that. Jody, why don't you show everybody, mm -hmm. you know, talk everybody quickly through what our use cases were that we yeah. tested. Yeah. And I'm going to queue up some of the videos so that we can show people what we mean by all of that. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. So uh, we picked, uh, so what we wanted to do is pick a, a bunch of different test cases or use cases and go ourselves and test out and, you know, vary some of these parameters that we talked about and see how that impacts the bit rate, right? And we also need to uh, remember here that um, everybody's use case is going to be a bit different. And uh, so we we wanted to pick 
you know, use cases across the spectrum, the lower end of the spectrum, as well as the higher end. And based on your own knowledge of uh, your use case, you might be able to recognize uh, one of these, right? So, yeah. um, so to test all of these use cases, uh, we uh, we set up a G4DN instance uh, with a single uh, Tesla T4 GPU, and then we uh, we ran some of these test cases. So the first one we can see here is a simple you know, an enterprise desktop user uh, trying to edit some documents. Uh, so for example, here, this is uh, just editing uh, a text document. And the yeah. next one here is, uh, uh, you know, maybe creating a PowerPoint slide. So this is a little bit more dynamic when compared to just editing text. You might have images, you might be moving around your slides, playing your slides. It's like a typical day of preparing for your uh, meeting, right? And, and then we have here the pair of view use case it's a it's a visualization application that we chose to uh, you know demonstrate uh, that but this can be analogous to something where the, your engineer is uh, trying to design an aircraft wing or it could be a, a geophysicist trying to find uh, fault lines right or it could be yep. even an artist trying to work on their animation application right yep definitely so it can be something similar to that and then we, we got went a little bit more the, intensive yes, then the, Yes, the higher end of the spectrum where it could be uh, more into the M&E space where you have uh, video streaming or it could be gaming, right? So we, we wanted to do some uh, tests there again with uh, high definition and also, um, you know, maybe 4K as well and also enabling quick there to see what kind of uh, difference it was going to make. So and we this have is where um, I got to. This is where I got to test out my new my new 4K monitor. 4K monitor, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Got to flatten my network connection, which we I think we did pretty successfully. Yes. Um, well, let's. I tell you what. Let's uh, hang on. Let's show everybody what we mean by this. Right. Because I think it, I think a picture tells a thousand words, right? So. Yeah. This is what we mean by word processing. So, so you started yep. off with like standard def, standard def desktop, mm -hmm. 1024, 768. Everybody yes. remembers one of those. Hopefully nobody's using that anymore. <laughs> um, but this shows a cool trick actually because um, as you go along, right, you, you actually scale up the, you actually scaled up the, the yes. pixel, the, 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 the aspect ratio of the screen. Yes. Um, but you get the idea. This is, this is pretty... It's pretty normal word processing stuff. And you mm -hmm. look at the bandwidth we're consuming here, it's kilobits. It's yes. a few dozen kilobits per second, which is not exactly going to blow negligible. anybody's hair back. Mm -hmm. um, pretty responsive. Uh, let me scrub through this a little bit because, you know, yep. uh, this is a big day at the office. We're writing a document. Yeah. Um, yeah as we went going? along, uh, we scaled up the resolution, right? We went, mm -hmm. we went up to... 1080 pixels. So this is an HD monitor now, the kind of thing yes. that most people have got, like 24, 27 inch monitor on their desktop. Pretty normal kind of thing. And and again, you know, but but see, we've we've added like almost nothing to the average bit rate. Yes. So we're using we're using DCV's own built in monitor for mm -hmm. this kind of stuff, so that we can see the frame rates and the bit rates. But you can you get the idea. You know, word processing is not exactly. Uh, this is not graphics intensive, but there, there's the right. low end of the scale. Then, of course, you did some PowerPoint. Yes. So, you know, like I mentioned, it could be just uh, editing slides, uh, you know, adding uh, images, uh, you know, working on your slide deck. And here again, we, we did the standard uh, def and we also did some high def. So you can see that, uh, you know, as there is, uh, uh, there is content moving on your screen, it is uh, pulling up the, uh, the average bandwidth, but it is still not not as much, right? It is still in the kilobits per second range. And uh, you, you can see that it added a few more when, uh, when you went uh, up the, you know, when you scaled up the resolution, but it's still, I think it has, uh, you know, remain even under a megabit per second. So yeah. that's, uh, that's quite negligible. So we're, we're not even touching the sides of most people's broadband connections here. This is really yeah. kind of a tiny amount of bandwidth activity. Mm -hmm. So, all right. And so then now what yes. I found interesting is this one, because this one really, I was a bit surprised that we didn't see more data rate, but when you think about it, there's not that much stuff on the screen that's really moving yes. a lot. Yes. 
So when you're running your visualization or post processing, right, you might not be moving your model like every every second of every minute, right? So here I have chosen a, an example of a CFD workload with open form. It's a motorbike uh, model, and then uh, we are spinning around the model here, and you you will slowly see that as uh, as we start working on the model, moving it around and trying to analyze it some more, you can see that uh, the the average bandwidth and the, the the bandwidth consumption is uh, going up and again here this is an example of uh, uh, a standard uh, standard dev and uh, as we are moving the model here there is an increase in the bandwidth consumption that is because there are more pixels changing at that given point in time um, yeah. th this this might be you know similar to the PowerPoint or slightly more than that. And when we scale up the resolution, we'll see that it is adding a few more. Uh, it's going to add a little bit more to the consumption, but yeah. it is uh, still not that, uh, you know, not, not that taxing. Yeah, over, over your internet. And you know, when we've taken the numbers here, we've kind of gone for the high end of the average number. Um, and the thing worth keeping in mind about all of these use cases is no no person when they're actually sitting at a desktop interacting with it like yeah. this no person ever actually does it for eight hours solid during the day yes. they they get up and go to the bathroom they go get coffee they mm -hmm. uh you know they they stare at the pixels on the screen for 10 minutes trying to work out hmm should i change yeah. that you know there's a lot of decision making involved a lot of that kind of work so it's not it's not constantly streaming so Correct. Keep in mind that all of these numbers that we're going to see in a minute are kind of the upper bounds, aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's have a look at this. Uh, let's start video streaming. Love interesting is, ones. This is some fun stuff because this is where yeah. we start to get a bit a bit cranky with our network connection and start mm -hmm. pushing things a bit. So what did you do so here? This one, this was... Yeah. So this one is just, um, you know, right now we are running a, a lower resolution. We are just pulling up a, a simple YouTube video, not 4K, nothing, nothing fancy there. Uh, it's just uh, not too much going on there on the screen, but we are streaming a video. Um, so, oh, my God, not uh, this guy. Oh, <laughs> terrible choice. So, uh, yeah, there, there you see that uh, the, uh, the average... Uh, bandwidth is a little higher than the previous use cases, right? This is a little bit more graphics intensive and also network heavy, but it, it is still, there's not too much uh, content here moving on the screen. And you see, mm. uh, you see what right now we are, we are somewhere close to two megabits per second. Yeah. Um, and then we can do the same thing at uh, at a scaled up resolution. Uh, yeah. And then it is going to add a few more, uh, f a little bit more to your bandwidth. But again, even, even at an HD, you know, we're starting to see an average of a couple of megabits a second. Yep. <clears throat> at an HD bit rate. Yes. All right. Let's just. So keep. This, this is all. Yeah. At this point, this is just TCP. Just like to remind you, because we are, we have oh, yeah. uh, test cases coming up where we have, uh, you know, 4K videos and with quick. So uh, let let's. And uh, indeed, this those. is the quick one, right? Um, yeah. This is this is where uh, Booth got to play around with his uh, new so 4K is, monitor. Right. So this is this is where I got to get out my 4K monitor uh, mm -hmm. and play around with 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 quick versus TCP, and I quickly found that. Quick gave me a much better experience, and I think the the insight to, to be drawn there is my internet connection at home hasn't been great this week. Um, for some reason, I've got 600 megabits, but it, I haven't been getting all that 600 megabits, and I need to have a chat with Virgin Media about it. So, but still, with with all those kinds of you know uh, uh, congestion issues and so forth, you can see that the video is is really mm -hmm. super high quality. This is really crisp yeah. video coming through. Um, and when we were getting, you know, and it was, it was also visible in the bit rates. Yeah. And there's a lot going on on the screen, right? There's a there lot is. of dynamic content. Yeah. But H.264 is doing a pretty cool job here. Yes. Um, now I think if we, <clears throat> if when we get to gaming, everything changes quite a lot because yeah. in gaming, a lot of stuff is moving. In fact, it's almost by definition, stuff is changing insanely with gaming, right? Yes. Uh, everything on the screen is always moving. Mm -hmm. um, I actually think this is like one of the, this is kind of your canonical gaming experience, isn't it? 
yeah yeah totally so here uh, what we have is just uh, uh, hd and 1080 pixels and then uh, you know we're just uh, uh, you know going over the uh, uh, we are going through the game and then we see that it is adding a little bit of uh, more bandwidth, but this is again all uh, TCP and this is on my uh, HD monitor. But yeah. we also wanted to test the same thing out with, uh, with the 4K experience. And, oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, huh. yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about that because that yes. here it is here. And this is, I mean, I got to say, when you actually watch this on a 4K monitor and you're seeing this, it looks amazing. Yeah. Um, it really does look pretty. It's it. This is pretty cool. So yeah. this is 4K resolution. At this point, we were we were occasionally peaking up in the uh, 12 to 15 megabits was where mm -hmm. we we're kind of peaking. Yeah. But even over the the course of this bit of video from front to back, and I think the the most interesting part. Let me see if I can scrub through. The most interesting part in this video, which is really what reflective, you know, it's reflective of games, is really this part here where pretty much everything in the room starts moving. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot of GPU activity going on here because yes. the GPUs are actually creating this stuff real time. Uh, so mm -hmm. the GPU on the machine was actually going off its brain uh, at the same time as the, the pixels were streaming. But still, we were averaging around about 10 megabits a second. Yeah. Um, and this is quick, right? Uh, yeah, this, this is, is quick. This is 4K yeah. video, mm -hmm. uh, 30 plus frames per second. Yes. Uh, and streaming over the internet to my house, you know, from a from a data center in Dublin, which is, you know, not that far away. Only, you know, maybe a few hundred miles away, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's the grow flight. So if you yeah, recognize any one of those test cases there, mm -hmm. you're going to have a pretty good, uh, you're going to be able to interpret uh the data that we've got here we've talked about with the the display resolution i've kind of tagged the sd hd 4k mm -hmm. kind of things hd's in bold and the 4k's with gold color uh just to get it to stand out uh then we've we've looked at what the the bit rate was that we measured as the average bit rate for you know for the for the for the session that we measured and mm -hmm. as you can see you know some of these things like editing word documents it's kind of trivial stuff yes. it really is tiny stuff we turn that into how many megabytes would get delivered if you did that consistently for an hour, uh, which now an hour consistently editing a Word document is a lot. Mm. Um, yeah. An hour doing PowerPoint is, oh, my God, that's horrible. Uh, people shouldn't have to do that. Um, we turn that into dollars at the current at the current rate for data out charges out of, uh, out of the US East 1 region. Uh, and then we also, what we did is we just, we measured these as what's the percentage uplift if you were paying the on-demand rate for G4DN XL instance, which is mm -hmm. the... Uh, yeah, so uh, we, we standardized these test cases, right? When we, we picked one one instance, but uh, you get the point. So this is, uh, this yep. is on G4DN XL. Yeah. yeah, and then a Linux instance is kind of cheaper because, you you know, there's, we're not paying Microsoft for an operating system license here right. to run Windows, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why I've got two columns there. But on the whole, you know, it's 71 cents an hour to run an e to run one of these instances uh, with a GPU and a handful of cores and a bit of memory mm -hmm. um, and to run these streaming applications. And then, you know, we really just looked at what the impact was, and like you said, you know, we can dispatch these fairly pedestrian cases pretty quickly. Like yeah. sharing a desktop with a human who's doing interactive work, even if that interactive work is fluid dynamics visualization or animation right. visualization, I mean, it's it's tiny amounts of data. And then, and then kind of the worst case, it's adding, yeah, these are probably Windows instances if you're doing animation or kind of fancy graphics like that. Um, it's it's only adding a few percent to your bill. Yep. Um, probably if you're worried about your costs on these things, your first optimization should be either to oversubscribe the instance and have more, more humans using the same instance, mm -hmm. which you can do with DCV. With DCV, yes. You can place more users with yeah. the virtual sessions, yeah. Or you go and buy a reserved instance if you're going to be using these mm -hmm. things more than eight hours a day, right? Uh, there's, yeah. 
there's cost optimizations to be done, but I guess what we're calling out here is that the network traffic really is not a place where you're going to really optimize much. It's it's even if you optimized it incredibly, you're not going to be shaving much off your bill. The real bill is coming out of the instance at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, standard F and HD are still within the realms of not costing that much, but you can suddenly see the multiplier when you put and you go to 4K because you can just see the gaming stuff. This is really where the the differentiation happens because yes. how did you you the gaming benchmark? Tell us a bit about the gaming benchmark. What does it do to a machine when it's running? So uh, you can actually uh, pull up the GPU statistics, right? You can see how how heavy it is on the GPU as well. So it is uh, it is almost at uh, 50, 60 percent utilization on the GPU constantly. Right. So it is uh, pretty graphics intensive, and there's a lot going on on that screen. So, so you, it, you it wouldn't be able to oversubscribe the GPUs that much, would you? you mm -hmm. Yeah. If you that's if correct. you had, maybe you could put a second gamer on that GPU. Uh, yeah. but it's getting tricky. You're probably yes. getting to the point where you might be stressing it a bit too much. Yeah, it, it depends on the game as well, right? It, it depends on how graphics intensive it is, whether you'll be able to fit another user on that GPU. Right, and so those game benchmarks, or in fact your own game benchmark, is going to be quite informative about how much you're punishing your GPU and therefore uh, whether you can oversubscribe your GPU with multiple gamers or not. Now we did see we did see a difference between TCP and Quick mm -hmm. at the 4K case when I was running the extreme, you know, the extreme benchmark. Um, I th I you know we didn't see much difference between Quick and TCP and all the other tests, did we? That's right. Yeah, we we ran some quick tests on uh, the document editing and CFD visualization as well, but there uh, there wasn't any uh, any significant difference to point out. Right. Between TCP so, and Quick, so mm -hmm. so it may be that the TCP versus Quick. I mean, Quick consume more bandwidth. It may well have been that uh, you know my internet connection being a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I was certainly seeing a higher frame rate when I was using Quick. Um, you know, because it was and it was definitely a much smoother experience when it was running. Have a look at the the videos that we showed and the use cases that we described, and see which one rec you recognize for your workload. But on the whole, sort of the answer to the question that customers have been putting to us is, you know, if you're doing anything that's a human interacting with a desktop, it's the, the, the network traffic charges are probably negligible. If you're doing gaming or video streaming, we should be doing a custom POC to actually evaluate your circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, again, there with uh, video streaming or gaming, every every customer, every every you know, every use case is a bit different. So uh, running a POC there would be a good way to assess uh, what kind of uh, expectations we can set there. Jyothi, that was that was really cool. Thank you for getting all of that content together and, bring, and getting all of this data collected. This has been a really interesting, uh, it's been a really interesting insight. And I hope, uh, hope this helps customers make a lot of judgments about this stuff. Thank, um, thanks a lot uh, for bringing me in, Booth. And it was uh, it was good to uh, run some of these experiments and uh, talk to our customers about this. Yeah.